Mastering Menopause. And today I'm super excited to introduce to you Chris Shadick. He is a sober coach. I came across him as I was going contemplating dry January and looked looked up, you know, sober coaches. And I also found that he has a connection to one of my good friends, Sean Needham. And so I reached out and said, Hey, would you like to be on my podcast? And he was like, sure. <laughs> so, so, you know, I know that you help people with sobriety and maybe you could give us a little bit of backstory on what it is that you do, Chris. Yeah. Well, thank you, you, Kathy, for having me here. I'm glad to be here. What up, Sean? Thanks for connecting us. It's cool that we both know him. So yeah, I am a a sober coach, I guess you would call it. And I help high functioning drinkers change their relationship with alcohol and really kind of get back their life, reignite their life. I spent about 15 years over drinking, having an issue with it. It got kind of progressively worse. You know, before doing this, I worked as a Uh, radio DJ for most of my life since I was like 15. And I was doing that job and I was finding myself feeling unfulfilled. I wasn't connecting to anything. I wasn't passionate about it anymore and felt kind of lost. And so I was in the comfort zone though, where it was like, well, if I don't do this, what am I going to do? I'm too afraid to get out of it. And so that was causing me to drink more and more. Everything in my life looked on paper like it was good, but behind the scenes, Man, I was passing out on my couch basically every night, drinking at least a 12-pack of beer, and then I would have to make sure I had some vodka or some whiskey in there just to make sure that I would knock myself up because I got to the point where I felt like I can't sleep unless I get myself drunk enough, which is all BS now that I've realized. But anyway, I, I just wasn't liking where I was going with uh, with my life. I knew that if I wanted to have the life that I felt like I was meant for, that alcohol needed to go away because I knew that that was the one thing that was holding me back. And so I had a moment, it was Father's Day of 2021 was the last day that I drank. And I I literally had like a, when I went to bed that night, I had like a flash of light in my my head. And I'll never forget that. It was kind of like, that was the switch flipping. Like, okay, I'm a non-drinker from this point forward. And at that point, I didn't plan on working with people around this area. I never would have thought I would be doing this. Nobody knew that I had a problem with alcohol except my wife. And so for me to kind of go public with it was a big challenge for me. But it was also a relief because once I did, I had people that I hadn't talked to in forever reaching out to me saying, hey, I struggled with this too. And and thank you for talking about it. And I started to realize, look, there's a lot of people out there that are kind of suffering in silence with alcohol addiction because nobody's really talking about it. You know, it's accepted everywhere. You you go to an event and there's alcohol there. Pretty much everybody in my life drinks. And so I didn't want to be the weird one that's like, oh man, I I think I have a problem with this. And so I think a lot of people hold back on that and uh, they just continue to suffer in silence. And, you know, I was like, okay, what am I going to do to get over this? I didn't like the options that were out there. AA is not for me for for reasons we can get into if you want, but, and then rehab way incredibly expensive. I didn't see something in this sort of area, which I would have wanted in that time. So I just decided to do it on my own, you know, and it's been the most rewarding thing of my life, watching people transform their, their lives and, Literally, I get to watch people's souls return because I see them when they're at their darkest. And then as they go through, they put in the work. It's challenging. It's daunting. It's not as bad as they think it's going to be. And then they get over that that moment and they go, oh, my God, my life is is back. And it's it's quite, you know, magical. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. So I know like my, for myself, my friends and I, and you know, some of my clients were doing dry January. So I'm sure <laughs> you're pretty inundated with some questions about that. But as far as like longevity wise, um, what would you recommend for somebody that might want to explore going past dry January? Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those things where to try a dry January, if you've never done it before, or even it can be any time, you know, if you want to take a 30 day break, I think it's really, really great. Because you'll notice even in those 30 days, a a pretty big difference in your body, in your skin, the way you're feeling. It's still early on, though. So, you know, it does take time to really notice a lot of the major benefits you get from removing alcohol from your life. So, 
anybody who is attempting to do a dry January, I say that's incredible. You know, I did that a couple of times. And I remember a couple of years ago, I did dry January and I felt so good. I'm like, I'm just going to keep this going. And I got like halfway through February. And then what happens? My, my sister comes over and I'm like, well, I can't, I can't have my sister over and not drink. So I threw it all away and we decided to drink my wife and I, even though we were feeling really great. I wish I wouldn't have done that because I wanted to see like how far I could go with it. So I would just say, if you do dry January and you're feeling great, keep rolling with it and don't necessarily put like an end date on it. Just, uh, just keep diving a little bit deeper, start noticing more and more benefits that you're, that you're experiencing and really kind of ask yourself some of the questions of, okay, do I really want to go back to alcohol? If I do, do I want to go back full time? What does that look like? You know, I'll just say for me and for a lot of people I've I've worked with, like we've tried the moderation game where it's like, okay, I'm just going to cut back. I'll only drink on the weekends or I'm only going to have beer. We're going to cut out the hard stuff. And it's like all these mental gymnastics that we end up playing with ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just takes up so much energy. And then when we don't stick to the rules that we put in place, we get mad at ourselves. And then when we get mad, we get stressed. We, what do we want to do as drinkers when we're mad and stressed? We want to drink more. And, you know, it's one of those things where I just know for me personally, not having alcohol at all has been so much easier than trying to play those games. And I just wish I would have done it sooner. But it, even if you're not planning on being a complete non-drinker, taking a break anytime and really paying attention to the benefits can can be a wonderful thing. So let's talk about the benefits. What can people expect? Like, I I know, like for myself, sleep has been amazing, you know, and it's only been, what is it? Eight, what, seven days, eight days, nine days? First couple, first couple of days, I would say, yeah, I was a little like, oh my God, you know, but now it's like a, like a difference. And I can definitely see a difference with, with energy. I'm also working with some thyroid issues. So like, I'm just putting everything, you know, a lot of, a lot of focus on that as well. But I would say for sure, sleep is, is definitely an improvement. And just the just, I think I look a little bit younger. <laughs> so yeah. what else, what else can, what else are the benefits? It's only been a week for me. So <laughs> yeah, but isn't that amazing? It's only been a week. And that's the thing is like, it gets better and better and better. The further you get out of the booze bubble, you start yeah. to kind of realize, oh my God, that was affecting all these different, it has such a ripple effect. And that is one of the things, let's just call it what it is. Alcohol makes us look older than we are. It makes us look more worn down, you know? And so when you quit drinking, you will, your skin will improve. You will look younger, literally like you can look 10 years younger. I'll show you pictures of what I used to look like a couple of years ago. And I, I don't even recognize that guy anymore. The sleep is so much better. And that does take a little bit of time. Now, it doesn't happen right away for everybody. More money. I mean, literally, it's like giving yourself a $10,000 raise. When you think about all the money you spend, not just on alcohol, but when you're going out, when you're, you know, Uber rides, Lyft rides, you know, let's buy shots, you know, all these different things. I mean, it really does add up. You know, the really cool thing is you start to enjoy life's little moments more, like you're more present. Like as a father, I'm a much more present father. I don't rush through story time with my daughter anymore just to get back to my drink. We play around, we have fun. In the morning, instead of being hung over when my daughter wants to get up and play, I don't just turn a show on and have her go watch it. I'm like, okay, let's get up. Let's let's enjoy this. I'm a, I'm a better husband. You're like, overall will just improve. And there's just there's just, there's a, there's so many things that happen and what, what it takes some time though. So what I think a lot of times happens is people go, okay, I, I do the dry January and I noticed a little bit of a difference, but I didn't notice a big enough difference to make me go. I want to keep doing this. But what I will tell you is that just keep going and you'll start to notice. Like sometimes you won't notice benefits until six months down the road or even a year, but I, you know, they're so better than the 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 crap you get from from drinking the hangovers the guilt and the shame and the regret of what did i do last night and who did i insult or what did i say and you know that you get more confidence in yourself is a big one too that we think alcohol is giving us this liquid courage but when you get far enough away from it you go oh actually i like me for who i am i don't need to alter myself to fit in or to you know not be so socially anxious in situations or awkward, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's funny because it's so prevalent, right? It's just in everything. We celebrate with it. We mourn with it. You know, you're having a bad day, you have it. If you're having a great day, then then you have it. And it's just so such an accepted form. But it literally is a poison. <laughs> you know, it's not meant for the human body to have like to. I I would say you you know it it's not non beneficial I wouldn't say there's a benefit to it. It isn't harmful to have a little bit, but we're not talking about just having a glass of wine here and there, right? So we're talking about something different. So yeah. You know. yeah, I mean, there are some 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 of those lucky people that can have a, a glass of wine and then not have another drink for a couple of weeks. And, you know, I, I could never do that. It was, if I started drinking, it was, I had to go until I passed out pretty much. And, and one of the things that I didn't mention when you're talking about benefits, but I think is a massive one, is your anxiety levels will will really go down. Of all my clients, that's what they tell me the number one thing for them is when we're drinking, our anxiety is like, it's through the roof. And we think that we need to drink to calm that anxiety, but actually it's because of the drinking that is keeping us anxious. And the only thing you know that's gonna make that anxiety go away is another drink. So when we get far enough away from it again, you'll notice anxiety levels go way down. I mean, my wife and I, she also quit drinking after I did and she saw the benefits. So now we're both sober and our whole relationship was built around us drinking together. I mean, we met while we were drinking. We would sit on the couch and drink together. Now we're sober and we say all the time, like, God, remember how, how much anxiety we used to have about everything? And now we're just like, just go with the flow. So that that makes it a, a world of difference. Yeah. Where, where does the anxiety come from? Because I know we're, it's, well, I don't know, but I've read that you're just getting that dopamine, right? And you're just trying to feed into that all the time. And so is that like a chemical response then? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, when you're drinking on a regular basis, you are flooding your brain with dopamine, this, the reward centers in your brain with an unhealthy amount of it. It's, it's not good to have that much dopamine because then eventually, you know, Unless you have that much dopamine at all times, you're going to think everything else is is either dull, it's boring, it's not as fun. And so you got to keep, the only way to get back to that level with the dopamine is to, to drink. And the more you drink, the higher it goes. And so you're really <laughs> disrupting your system when you're doing that. And this all plays into why we feel anxious. You know, if, if we're drinking every day, this is how I like to equate it. It's like, we take that first drink, right, and in the evening, and it's like we get a nice little massage because it does calm us down. It feels relaxing. It seems like our anxiety is melting away. But then for the next 24 hours, that anxiety is like kind of kicking us in the shin where it's not, you know, it's, it's annoying and stuff like that. And the only thing that's going to cure that kicking of the shin is by taking another drink. Whereas if you didn't take the first drink, you wouldn't have the kicking of the shin, a.k.a. the anxiety. So it's just like when you get to a, this point where you're drinking on a regular basis, you feel more and more anxious when you don't have a drink in your hand. And when you take that away, it's going to suck for a while as, you know, you know, the first week of dry January, your body's getting used to not having that anymore. And so that's why your sleep is, is disruptive. You're, you're going to have high anxiety there for a little while, but eventually it does get better. Yeah. It's that habit thing too. It's like, it's definitely that habit reward. <laughs> you know, it was like, it's nine o'clock. Hello. <laughs> it's time to drink. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, the ironic thing is that most of the reasons why we drink uh, because we believe alcohol is doing one thing, it's actually doing the opposite. Like a lot of people and myself, for example, was like, I need alcohol to sleep. Well, it's actually really giving you poor sleep. And if your sleep is poor, the rest of your day is going to be poor. So it's not getting you the restorative sleep that your body actually needs. It might knock you out, right? You have a couple of glasses of wine, it makes you sleepy, but the quality of sleep that you're getting is not good, you know? And again, we think, okay, I'm going to drink to help with stress and anxiety. Well, you're just causing more stress and anxiety because of drinking. And again, the, the, the courage, it gives me courage. Well, really it doesn't, it just makes us dumber. It just makes us not care as much about what we think, but it's not it's not giving you this confidence that we really think it is, you know? So you yeah, could basically your... look at every, yeah, every reason that you think alcohol is helping you with and go, well, actually it's doing the opposite, but it's hard to see that, right? We don't want to see that in our society. The blinders are kind of on because again, we, we don't want to be the weird ones who aren't drinking. You know, it's, it's, 
it's pretty messed up when you really think about how alcohol has all this unrestricted marketing and, you know, it's tough to get away from as opposed to other drugs, right? If you quit another drug, yeah, like cocaine, heroin, something like that, it's not, you're not being bombarded with it constantly. Your friends aren't doing it saying, Hey, come on, let's go do this. So it's, yeah. that's why it's tough. I think for people to move away from alcohol. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> you know, it's definitely that social, the social pressure, like that's just, that's just what we do, you know? So yeah, I definitely have, you know, been in that circle too, as a bartender, you know, I was a bartender for 30 years. So that was like, that was my, that's just what we did, right? Hang, my husband's a chef and that's what we did. We would just go out after. So, but that was in my twenties and thirties. I'm not 20 and 30 anymore. So, <laughs> you know, then it, now it's like, just turned into like, is it not even fun half the time, you know? So, so yeah, it's been, it's been a great experience. I know some of my clients as well, some of my nutrition clients have been doing it as well. And so I checked in with them this weekend. And one thing I saw so, so I found you on TikTok, right? And scrolling through TikTok and everybody was like, nope, it's Friday. Fuck it. I'm done. <laughs> right? so, yep. Like five days in and I'm like, and, but I had that thing too. It was like, oh, Friday night. Yeah. Cause it's like, Hey, now I'm done with my work week. Like it, it's time for, to, to, to replace that. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to replace the habit. Cause I know for me, it's a habit, right? It's nine o'clock. My body's like, okay, where's the wine? So I didn't want to replace that with another habit of just having a non alcoholic drink let's just take that cue away and then replace like i don't know like i just just didn't have it and sit there and deal with it right and see why what's going on you know and so i actually bought calligraphy pens right because that's a little bit more of a healthy habit and just started doing that instead because i knew i was going to have that kind of like okay what are we going to do any otherwise you know so so i bought those and then but by friday i was like god damn it it would be nice to have a drink in my hand <laughs> that's when i went and said you know like it doesn't make sense to sit there and i'm not gonna whip out my calligraphy pens on a friday night, you know? <laughs> yeah well i mean that's the thing you do have to you gotta like especially early on and if you're doing a dry january to fill fill yourself up with projects even if they're not exciting projects like cleaning out the closet, you know, cleaning out the garage, something to just keep yourself busy and preoccupied because eventually that that craving of like, oh my God, it's nine o'clock, it's wine, it's wine o'clock, it's, it's Friday night, you know, get your brain out of that pattern that you normally would be. And that does take some getting used to. It's going to take a little bit of willpower in those moments, but the yeah. more you do it, you're training your brain to go, okay, we're, we're changing this up now. And, and it will eventually become easier. Yeah. It's like a pattern interrupt, you know? So yep. if you do yeah, something. That's, that's so what long. I always tell my clients. Like if you are quitting drinking or you're taking a break and you get that urge, like you're talking about to do, do a few things. And that's one of them. First of all, like what I do is I have a word, I have an anchor word that I say, and that word is release. And if I ever find myself in a stressful or anxiety ridden place, or like, you know, in this case of having a, a craving for a drink, when I say the word release, it literally tells my body to like calm down. You know, my shoulders go back. We say that anchor is telling my brain to change the state of where you're at. You know, it's, that's kind of a cue and you can use any word that you want. Just kind of find one that works for you. The second thing is to have a tall glass of cold water, because a lot of the times you may just be dehydrated and we've been conditioning our bodies to, okay, when we're dehydrated, we go for the alcohol, have a tall glass of cold water, have another one. If you're still thirsty, and then do the pattern pattern interrupt, like we were just talking about. Do anything different than you would normally do. If you're sitting at home on the couch in front of the TV, drinking a glass of wine, that's what you normally do. Go out for a quick walk or run. Go jump on the neighbor's trampoline. Go to the gym. Do something. Call a friend, whatever. Just get yourself out of that pattern. And then there's also a tapping. It's called thought field therapy that I, I teach my clients. But, you know, it's tapping on meridian points in the body to release cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So it's not necessarily to like calm a craving, but it's to get our body and brain out of that like heightened state of stress. And oh my God, I, I have to drink. And what you'll find is if you do all those steps, by the time you get to them, you go, okay, it's, it's past. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's a, very interesting. Very interesting. So is there anything else that you want to add? 
we'll um, get into all of your socials and stuff and how to follow you, but. Yeah, well, you know, one thing I will say, because this comes up a lot is, well, what do I do if I want to quit and my partner is a drinker or all my friends are a drinker? And, and how is that going to work? It's probably the number one thing that I get. And it's a legit concern, right? I had this concern too. And you have to just really remember that this is your journey. And it's like walking on a balance beam. You can't do it with somebody else. You, this has to be just you. They can come behind you. They can go in front of you, but it has to be your journey. And, you know, do not let other people's opinions take you off of your journey, right? Like if your husband or your wife drinks, that's, that's their thing. And you can let them know how you want them to support you and all that. But you can't be mad at them if they're still going to have a drink and you're not like, this has nothing to do with them. It's it's about you. And if your friends are going to coerce you and say, come on, you can just have one, you may have to pull back from them for a little bit until you get strong where you feel like you can go out to the bar and order a non-alcoholic drink and be around them. Because you can do that. I, I don't believe in the philosophy of forcing ourselves to stay away from alcohol and people that drink and living in a bubble. That's that sounds like misery to me. I still go out with my friends. I still go out to a bar. I still will have a non-alcoholic beer every once in a while. And I have absolutely no problem with it because you have to really train your brain to look at alcohol differently than you currently do. It is not this harmless social pleasantry that is okay. It's it's a poison. Like you said, it's, it's trying to kill you and it's doing it slowly. It's deceptive and dangerous. And so it if you want to go on this journey, don't get pulled off by what other people think. Don't worry about, oh my God, what am I going to tell them? Why am I not drinking? You'll find out that people don't really care. They got their own stuff going on. And uh, if they do care, maybe that's not a great friend anyway, right? If they're going to try to get you off of you trying to better yourself and be healthier, it can be a gift to go, okay, maybe that person I don't really want to have in my life so much anymore. So... Yeah, I think too, I mean, is that true that sometimes people feel threatened when you say that you're not having anything when they, that's a thing? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if you're used to going out with people and drinking and then you say, wait, I'm I'm taking a break or I'm, I'm not going to drink anymore, they have one of two choices. They can up their game and go, yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to do the same. Or they can bring you down here to back to where you were, to where they are, because it's like putting a mirror on them and they, people don't want that. So there is a threatening factor. So one of two things is going to happen and they're either going to support you and go, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Or they, I guess they could also just support you and still drink and just, you know, be okay with whatever your journey is. But the other option is, yeah, they're going to try to get you to, to come back to it. I know a woman who quit drinking. She lost a hundred pounds. She worked out. She, I mean, she did so much work to get her body and her mind to where she wanted, lost a hundred pounds. Like I said, and then her best friend was like, I don't like you anymore. I don't like this version of you. I miss us going to the bar, watching hockey games and eating pizza. So what did this person do? She went back into her old patterns, started drinking again, started eating pizza, watching hockey because this friend wanted her to and made her feel bad, gained all the weight back and was right back to where she was. And that's so heartbreaking to me. And that's why I say you have to, no matter what, you are number one. You are the number one priority. And this is your journey. Don't let anybody else knock you off of that. Yeah. So, sabotage, right? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's sad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That does all that work for, for nothing, you know? So so where can, if, if somebody's looking to get more support, you know, feels like they really need to have some some more help, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm at Sober Coach Chris, Chris with a CH, on basically all the socials. TikTok is is where I'm, I'm I have do a lot of videos. I'm also on Instagram at that website is sobercoachchris.com. And I think it would be really cool if you are curious about any of this to join. I have a free Facebook group. It's called Freedom from Alcohol. And it's a wonderful community in there of people who are either trying to get sober, sober curious have been sober for an amount of time. And it's really a great community for support. When, you know, if you have a friend that's not supportive, you get a wonderful community in this group of people that will massively support you. So yeah, that, that's, I'd love to have you join. 
Awesome. So I will definitely link up all those links and yeah, join, join Chris's Facebook group. Is there quite a few people in there now, or is it just yeah, we got about 900 people in there right now. Yeah, it's so and it's it keeps growing and growing. And like I said, it's, you know, people will post in there about their journey and they're excited. They're doing it differently now. And what's really cool is, you know, the non-alcoholic beverage space is booming. More and more people are kind of going, questioning their relationship with alcohol. So you're not really alone as much as you were maybe a few years ago because it's this kind of trend. And so it's it's really great to be in a place where people are in the same boat as you and there's no judgment, there's never shame. I don't allow any of that stuff. I, I don't even like labels. When it comes to this, I hate saying, oh, I'm an alcoholic. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't wanna have to go to a meeting and call myself that, that's depressing to me. I don't even wanna have to say that I'm in recovery or a relapse, all these words just doesn't doesn't work for me. It's like, I I, I have, a challenge in my life that I want to overcome and then move on to the next chapter of it. And so that's really kind of my philosophy with all of this. Yeah, I love that. It's true. I think that the sober, the not the replacements, yeah, the sober, the replacements, what is that called? The products? Yeah, it has definitely taken Oh, over. for the non-alcoholic beverages? Like the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when I went into, so I went to a couple stores this this in the liquor stores this weekend, and the the one that I went to, like I thought they were going to have so much, and they actually didn't have anything; they were sold out. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I went to my to my local store, which didn't have a lot, but they had they had a good amount. And so I like, and this isn't, I know I'm not promoting anything, but I do like the Seed Lip products. They're they're really good to mix. You're not going to miss a cocktail, right? It's you can make a, a nice cocktail with those products. And then I did find a couple of good non-alcoholic wines. Ladies, it's not gonna it's not gonna taste like your Cam Crawford. <laughs> but Giesen is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc that's that's zero percent alcohol, and that's that's pretty good. And then I found a, another one, Luminara, makes a Cabernet and a Chardonnay, and those are pretty good as well. And then I got a tip from somebody to add a little bit of vinegar, so like a red wine vinegar to, to the red wine to give it a little bit more body and balance because they are kind of sweet. And so that tip worked that worked out pretty well too. So it's really, you know, there's they there are a lot of options. And then, you know, all over the news with dry January, and they were set, you know, a few, quite a few different outlets were saying like how to support yourself through, but also some bars are now having the non-alcoholic cocktails with, you know, some of these products. So it's great to see that like as an offering. I love that there's light alcohol. And I know we're not talking exactly about that, but for my for my clients, you know there's also a lighter alcohol so that you're not as affected by the alcohol or by the calories. So, you know, that's also an option. But yeah. Well, I, I will just say real quick, like, you know, we were talking about the benefits back when I was a drinker, I would, I would stay up late. I would eat junk food while I was drinking and watch TV. And I mean, I, dro I dropped 20 pounds within a couple of weeks of, of not drinking just because of all the extra calories. And, you know, alcohol has a lot of empty calories in it and they're, yeah. they're not, providing you really any nutritional value or anything. So <laughs> that's definitely a benefit too. But yeah, and like you're talking about with the with the non-alcoholic drinks, like put it in your normal wine glass, like trick your brain into, you can still like feel like you're having the experience and you're right, it's, it's gonna be different. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna get the same effect, but when you wake up the next morning without a hangover and you get up to go for a run or you, you know, you just feel clear headed, the more you do that, the more you'll go, oh, I kind of like this. This feels pretty good. And you get your mental capacity back and, you know, just being more productive and, and just all of these wonderful things that can happen. So, yeah, I don't, I wish I had a scale. I don't know if I've lost any weight, but I feel like a difference in, in my clothes. So <laughs> definitely probably lost, lost something, you know, so I would, I would imagine alcohol would be a inflammatory as well. So that would hold on to, although it is. It expels water. I would still imagine the inflammation from that alcohol would still increase the weight on your scale. So, yeah, yeah. Not to mention, it causes seven types of cancers, and it kills three million people worldwide every year. And how about all the friends and family of those three million people? It's the second most addictive substance in the world, only behind heroin. And these are things that many people don't know. So we wonder why we get addicted to it. Well, because it's so addictive, 
And it's not like we take a drink and we're all of a sudden hooked. It's a slow, insidious process. And at some point, many people lose that ability to take it or leave it. And, you know, I would just say if you're questioning anything about your drinking, that you're probably at that point and taking a break or just going all the way and saying, I'm a non drinker, man, it, it nobody regrets quitting drinking. Nobody gets up and goes, man, I sure wish I would have woke up with a hangover today. Sure yeah. wish I was giving all my money to, you know, Anheuser-Busch or whatever, instead of using it to, you know, invest in myself. So if you are thinking about it, and if you're doing dry January and you're feeling really good, just keep going. I mean, just, you owe it to yourself to keep going and and see what you can, you know, get from not having alcohol in your life. I promise you won't miss it. Eventually you go, oh, I don't, I don't miss that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for, for coming on. I, I appreciate this so much. And I know, you know, maybe some, somebody will think about like, yeah, what, what, what am I getting actually from alcohol? So, <laughs> yeah. but so I will link all your, all everything in the show notes and find that Facebook group. And I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. And I will say, you know, if any of your people watching this, you know, I talked about the, the five things to do if you get an alcohol craving. If anybody's interested in that, I can, I'll send that to them. So, you know, we can figure out how we can get a link and stuff like that up. Cause I think that can be super helpful in somebody that's early on in stopping drinking. Yeah. If you send me that, if, if you send me any of those resources, then I can just link those up or I'll just send them, send them your way. Perfect. <laughs> All right. you, Kathy, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.